Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to the Podcast, Soccer Podcast for us. Soccer. It's a brand new year, brand new day, and uh, hopefully, you know, COVID has not swept through your crib like it did. That's a lot. You already lying in the box. It's not just over. I've been hoping. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. So, because Marion, Delta, they just like try to like like through, like have, have, have the culture burst. Like, like, I, 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 I had it. PSA for everybody, when you're on a podcast, or when you're on a Zoom call, make sure you're, oh, if, if you are speaking, make sure that your mic is out, because you can be making a good ass point, do it, give us some hot shit, and then your phone's off, your, your, your mic's on mute, and you just missed all of this, it just, and it just ends up being tragic, tragic. but um, but yeah, yeah, you, you got your boy here, Drago here, got my main man, Yogi from Can I Kick It FC? What's good? Got Sills from Shea Butter FC. What's up, lady? Uh, chilling, man. It's too much snow on the ground. Um, Still, good, good lord, man. Well, it hasn't like it's not fresh now, so that's good. Please. Well, you had a dirty stuff, dude. I mean, it's not as dirty as like. It wasn't just like a conversation. Crying. Get that fresh snow on the ground. Oh, oh god. god. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> speak. We are we are not we do not condone nor advocate for any any type this of. This is uh, the previews drugs. for season four of Snowball. <laughs> grown, grown people make their own decisions. Yes, you're you're grown. <laughs> you, you do what you do. Like, FTC I would make. and F and Two Cents FC do not do not endorse no. any of that. Oh man, but uh, yes, uh, so hopefully you guys are out here. Staying safe, staying healthy, and everything. Um, it's our first first uh, show of the new year. I said we honestly, because either our leagues have been either been in the off season, we've been on break. Honestly, we really haven't watched a great deal of soccer, even though today actually was a pretty uh, pretty heavy day at a uh, uh, after a couple of nations started on the day on Sunday, uh, an FA Cup over the weekend. Um, what, what else is going on? Uh, um, P- yeah, PSG a, and um and uh, uh Premier League uh, shutting down and thinking COVID's a joke still so doing games. Uh, the code, yeah, the, the F- FA Cup, FA Cup, uh, Code de France for the woman. I think yeah. uh, there's yesterday. Uh, Liga Mackey's back. Uh, Feminal is back this weekend, and there were a few um, WSL games uh, this week weekend as well. But with all that being said, like we figured we just we we, we take a smooth this 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 uh this first uh episode and uh actually meet up with someone from, from the two cents culture verse that you know if if you haven't uh seen her work on two cents fc dot com and or on ESPN on the big website like yo like she's been out here balling out of control the past year first for Celtic and then for North Carolina out of the uh, uh Danish Superliga uh I said yes. A real dope person. She actually caught COVID too over the weekend. So, like, trust me, the, the culture verse has just been <laughs> all up. All, yeah, it's, it's been it's been that kind of weekend. But uh, Mariah Lee, what is up, lady? Hey, yes, hey. Um, COVID got me. It got me. Yeah. Hey, you know, it doesn't look it. Me. It doesn't look it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it actually wasn't that bad. Um, I just had some minor cold symptoms, but I'm out of my quarantine. Just in time to go back to Denmark, so I'm leaving yeah. Seattle. I'm here um, with family, and I'm going back tomorrow. I gotta ask, how long is that flight? And how many naps are you taking? <laughs> it's like nine hours or so to. I'll go direct, like Seattle to I think Iceland, and then it's like two and a half from Iceland to Copenhagen. Wow. It might be actually longer going this way, but coming from Iceland here was only like eight and a half, so it might be like oh, twelve no. now. Isn't it longer going west to east? 
I have no idea. I don't know. Well, that's out of my pay range. <laughs> you, you, you count for that plus I plus work the, in education. I plus, the, the, plus the <laughs> plus the hours that you uh that you that you lose from the time difference. Like yeah, that's part of like yeah. By the time you get back over to Denmark, it's like oh, it's like a whole other day. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask a real question. These two got soccer stuff. I'm gonna ask a real question. What kind of snacks you eating on this flight? Because this is nine hours. <laughs> no, they paid me. Iceland Airline, they don't give you free anything. Oh, so no. you got to pay for the meal. Oh, wait, wait. Whoa, the whoa. Time out. Time out. Time out. Woo. Hold on. Wait. wait. <laughs> you don't get what? You don't nine get, hours? Of, you don't know. No, no peanuts, no crackers, no, no. Not, a little, not a little shortbread cookie, nothing. No, no. We're, on a, we're on a tight budget, so you know, just you know, whatever we I got. I know they're a small country, but you can't I give me no crackers. They got money. They got money. I don't believe that. Right. We just went to the heroes. <laughs> you got some money laying around. That's the national team that said, like, no, nah, we can't get this money to the heroes. <laughs> right. Wow. Oh. Well, okay, do you bring your own stacks on the plane yeah. then? I'm going to bring something because. Uh, you, you black. I know you are. You probably got some collard greens in the jar somewhere. Got to wrap the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just sitting there with a whole plate uh, of oxtail. I'm like, y'all want some? I know it's nine hours. And of course, we got we got we got Washington State all the way covered. We got we got east and west uh, yes. up in here today. And like, you know, like I, I've I've been actually I've, I've been wanting to get you on the show for a while, but it actually wasn't until like. The uh, you recently just came out with an article on the uh, ESPN uh, undefeated about uh, New Year's Day traditions, mm-hmm. and uh, I was reading through, and I was like, "Hold up, we got like so." Mariah's family is actually from not that far from where my family is from. Um, she's uh, her fa- grandma's from Wilson, North Carolina. Correct? Wilson. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Okay. So okay. like, of course, me, me, um, I'm originally from Kenston, it's like not even like thirty minutes away. So I was like, "Oh, oh, we about to." But the see what's up here. So I, I I do have one quick question. First of all, of course, thank you guys for checking us out on, on the podcast apps, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audio, Audio Boom, and of course, make sure you hear that like and subscribe on the FTC GD YouTube channel, and also on two cents FTC dot com. Um, question there. So like, I, I'm gonna get to the Stanford stuff in a second, but like, Wake Forest, what uh was the reason for you going there because you want to kind of like get that that back home feel? Yeah. Yeah. So I, in high school, was thinking about Wake Forest. They were my second choice. And then I ultimately went to Stanford. And Mm -hmm. then my second go around when I was getting recruited for my fifth year, I went back over there and the coach is awesome. But also my family is from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of get in touch with and I didn't even really see them that much, but just kind of living in the same place that they lived in. Like my grandma went to A and T, which is down the road. Ooh, one word. Okay, HBCU. I and T. So like, <laughs> just being Wake Forest is so close to um, went to Salem State. Like, there's mm-hmm. no HBCUs out. Like, I never really um, saw that side. And just living in the West Coast in Seattle and California, like I didn't experience that culture. And it's mm. very different. It is very different. Very like, different. Very I was different. like, is it going to be more East Coast vibe or will it be more of a Southern vibe? But I got there, I was like, oh, this is the South. It's the South. It's North Carolina is yeah, absolutely South. Very much so. uh, your opinions on cookout? Um, I'm like, what that cookout train looking like? What we get? I don't really <laughs> eat fast food like that. Like, oh. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. <laughs> well, but did you, did you at least get find a, a good barbecue spot? Mm. Um, no. See. Which, well, Okay, Grego, mustard or vinegar, fam? Vinegar. Okay. Vinegar. I didn't know which yeah. side of the state y'all were from. My fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I could give you a whole story as far as what, like, when I went to North Carolina last month and just that, uh, I had, a, I had, a, I got a barbecue story for that, but like, that would just take up way too much time. Okay. But yeah, clearly, yeah, vinegar. Like, and no matter what anybody tells you, do not get barbecue from any other state but North Carolina. Because oh, you can't do it. South Carolina whoa, can't do whoa, it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are you coming? I thought you were in Virginia, sir. We got Texas. Like, what that's, di- that's, different, that's different barbecue. That's not the yeah, same. Yeah, it's way different. Yeah, it's not the same. Like, you, you want that pulled pork barbecue. Like, that's, 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 that's it. First and foremost. Okay. I don't, you know, I don't <laughs> eat a whole lot. <laughs> okay. I don't eat a whole lot, but what I do, it's going to be that, that North Carolina barbecue. I can <laughs> guarantee you that. I absolutely guarantee you that. Mm. I'll, put, I'll put a stamp on it right there. 
but uh but yeah no 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 mustard uh, just straight vinegar but um but yeah like so like this year's actually been a pretty busy year for you because like could you start like from the last time that you were on uh two cents uh pod you were actually at Celtic at the time but then you moved over to Denmark like what what uh, what sparked that move um well Celtic just wasn't a right fit for me and um I like wasn't being challenged so I wanted to be challenged and I wanted to grow and FCN came up because one of my coaches from the rain is on staff here and so okay. she was like yo like come and so knowing her and then getting on a call with the head coach and then their sports director, like they had a really good culture and they really focus on player development. And okay. so um, a lot of pro teams, like it's about executing. You come up there and they just are like, okay, execute, perform. They're not really trying to develop you. Mm-hmm. And so FCN has a very player development focus. And so we'll like do individuals, like you're with the, coaching staff an hour, you know, every week if you want, and you're like really fine tuning your skills. And that's mm-hmm. very, very unique. So like when, so when you went to, I, I mean, yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely using that FCN because yeah, I'm not saying for sure. Like, that's just, like, that's, it doesn't roll off the tongue like that. So <laughs> FCN, that, that'll, that'll work, work out just fine. Um, so when you, um, what parts of your game were you looking to uh, work on? Like I guess the, the most out of a, uh, out of everything, like when, when you made that move, because like I, I was keeping up with you at Celtic, and I was like, yeah, like you, well, you're kind of killing. Yeah, but also the Scottish league, it's there's a huge drop off. So like outside of us, Rangers, Glasgow City, we just destroy teams. And yeah, you, I score two goals, whatever, against some bum team. Like that's not for me. That's not rewarding. And it doesn't mean you're necessarily good. Like there's people who, okay, you scored a hat trick against a bum team. And so um, I didn't really think that really meant that much that mm. I was doing well there. Um, like when I scored against Rangers, heck yeah. Like that, you know, that's like something for me to like really be proud of. But against the other teams, I was like, whatever. And um, so parts of my game that I wanted to work on when I got here, through playing because I was like oh like generally I like to focus on finishing um different types of finishing um creating opportunities on the wing or if I'm playing center forward kind of in general but when I got here I just um felt like I was really good um when in the flank and like Mm -hmm. I like got a lot of crosses off and I was good at beating people on the dribble um but I want to get better at um, run so I can get the balls in like closer to goal. So mm-hmm. then I can like be able to shoot more instead of like having to cross all the time from super wide. So it's more about getting into those dangerous positions, getting opportunities closer to goal. Okay. Okay. You work so on like, running outside in or you doing runs down the middle. Like do you prefer wing or, or center forward? It depends on how we play. Um, because wing, like for me, it's like a love hate relationship. Because a lot of the times I'm just super wide, and they're like score more, and I'm like I get it here. And there's three defenders between me and the goal. Like I'm supposed to dribble everybody. Um, I mean, you know, you you you, you get your you get your Vinicius on, and like boom, there you go. She said no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the average just doesn't work in my favor, sir. No, um, <laughs> it happens. Center forward can be fun because you're closer to the goal, but it depends on how the team plays. I really like playing a two front, actually. I grew up playing a two front because you can do both. Um, so What's your role in the two front? Are you like the, I hate to say it, pace and power? Higher, or what's higher, your or, yeah. Um, I mean, I like it kind of depends on the other person, too. Um, so if they are good back to goal, then I can be the one making runs in behind. Um, okay. So, but it's more just like about the relationship. So I think it's really fun when I'm checking and then like I can spin, play them, they can play me through, like do one twos and stuff. You get fun, do little dummies. Um, and then that way I get it already behind the outside back. So then if I beat, I, I have one to beat really. You have, you beat the center back and then, 
it's like the other center back comes or they stay and I am free to go. So it's a lot more fun than beating the outside back and then you're like, okay, there's still a bunch of people between me and the goal. Okay. Oh, yeah. So... No, I, 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 I mean, would try to just try to dish off and everything. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's all good, but um, but no, I, what I was another thing that, that I actually uh, wanted to touch on real quick because uh, I was going through. Um, I say if y'all haven't done so already, uh, Mariah has a blog on two sets dot com called Murder She Wrote. Um, Murder is one of many many nicknames that Mariah it's has. It's She Wrote, but Murder She Wrote's my IG handle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting all back. I'm, saying, I'm getting all tongue tied. Pardon, like, so we're, it's, it's still early in the year. Like, you know, it, I, blame, blame the Kobe. Blame the Kobe. So there, there it is. And for a but, second, uh, I think you said blame the Kobe, and I was like, why are we blaming Kobe for this? <laughs> See, <My fault. laughs> yeah, y'all, y'all ain't gonna come at me this early in the year, man. I'm just, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, uh, well, let me ask you this question. Uh, See, I'm, a, I'm gonna ask about the food again, once again, because you know, food is a great thing. Who has where's better food at Scotland? Or uh, over there in the FCU. It's all bad. It's all bad. Oh, no. The Northern Europeans, they they don't know spice. (laughs) They, like, pepper is spicy. So Um, they they, they would sail it all across the world, trying to dominate all these other countries, and then bring back no kind of spice. Oh, you be. Stole all those spices not to use them, my lord. Right. (laughs) (laughs) We'd have had a whole sick trail. Just for them not to use these spices. Oh, right? It's, yeah. I would say Copenhagen has a good food scene. Mm. So, you go know, out to eat, and there's a lot of places that I can get food from other cultures, and that's good. Okay. But if they're like, oh, yeah, we're cooking some Danish, whatever, I'm like, mm. So, do yeah. you bring your own spices? Like, do you have them hidden in the purse when you go over there? Are, are, are well, there you any carry on? Like, hot, hot, so- hot sauce in my back, so I can get a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Are we doing this? I just am like, it's fuel at this point. We're just. Because at this point, like, I mean, especially with you being home right now, I'd be like, yeah, like, let me make sure I get a bag full of some paprika, some, 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 some cumin, some, <laughs> some hot sauce. Like, I, I need garlic something powder. to just, garlic. yeah, garlic powder. 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 Yeah, garlic Yeah, it's, it's tough out there. It is tough. Oh, yeah. that, actually, that, that actually does lead me to like one thing I, I did I did want to ask because like like if, if you've seen Mariah stuff a lot, like where she keeps a, a fresh set of braids on while she's playing, I was I'm like, ask who, like, that. Where, like, like, who, like, where who's doing the hair? That yeah. <laughs> no, there's some there's some ladies. I hey, that's the first thing I, I find when I get out there. I'm like, okay, who's doing my hair? And so, um, like. I met a girl. She had some nice braids. I was like, where'd you get those? She told me her lady. Then I was walking down the street and there was another shop. I went in there looking around. And so I have two ladies that I trust out there and they do a good job. Um, so it's nice. It is nice because like they don't have the hair products out there. And like, it's a lot. If I'm, if I'm bringing spices and my hair products and lotion, they're gonna be stopping you at, at, like, at TSA. Like, like, what is what is this? It's just garlic butter. Like, it's all it is. So, excuse me, man. Why are you bringing a spice rack? <laughs> so, if I can, the more I can find and do out there, like, the easier it is. So, it's just easier to have hair braided than like trying to get all the gels and mm-hmm. conditioners and all that stuff. I feel that. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> so, like, at least at least the one part's hat handle. Like, at least, at least the hair's looking good. Like, so the food, we're going to have to, you know, figure something out there because, yeah, that sounds like... You're going to have to start a GoFundMe for you out there. You out there struggling. <laughs> yes, because it's expensive, too. Copenhagen is so expensive going out to know. eat. Mm. Uh-uh. Yes. yes. So, like, for that, that, like, you just had actually um, made me think of something. So, like, when you're going out to, um, when you're getting transferred and everything, like, like what's, what's the living arrangements? Are they, like, say, like, hey, we'll give you an apartment here. You can live over in this part of town or um, we'll make sure you got a chef. Like, what's, what's the setup there? 
in Denmark, we have a residence that's attached to the stadium. So they call it a hotel because it was a hotel and then they changed it over to just player um, housing. And okay. so it's cool because we practice early. Like we have to be in the locker room like 6.15. So I can just roll out of bed, go get food, um, and then go downstairs to the weight room and it's quick. Um, so that's a good, the, a positive side is it's very convenient, but we're like 45 minutes on the train north of the city. So if I want to do something fun, mm. then it's a little bit of a trek. No, no but, car, this is like, this is ride the train, like, like what's. Yeah. Like they're trying to get cars and, but it's a mess. So usually I just ride the train. And then you can like bike to the train, take your bike on the train, and then you bike around because okay. everybody has bikes. At, at this time of year, I don't know about that bike life. That, that seems like a whole. Hey, out there, rain, snow, sleet. They're serious. They mm-hmm. said, like, hey, you got to get this one way or another. So, I, I mean, uh, hey, more power to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the question I, I was going to get to earlier, another thing that kind of caught my attention about you was. Uh, when you're growing up, you're playing basketball. You play yeah. basketball and, and soccer. Um, it's the reason why is because like I actually have a best friend back home that used to coach at um, at, a, at a high school level at um, Maggie Walker. I know okay. Silvs and Silvs and Yogi will know. Uh, fun fact: My sister went to Maggie Walker. Ah, smarty, smarty, yeah. smarty. I didn't have the grades to get into Maggie. I'm not the successful. I'm, <laughs> this is me being the successful child. <laughs> oh, God, but um, <laughs> like. Where do you see like the similarities between um, soccer and basketball? Like, I actually do see a lot of overlap um, between the two. And like, what are the things like from basketball that you took over to soccer? Well, it's funny because um, they're both like physical sports, yeah. but I felt like basketball, um, you're forced to use your body. Where soccer, you can get away with like not using your body. Like a lot of female players, at least, don't. Mm-hmm. And so. I learned how to use my body playing basketball and I took it to soccer and it just took my game to a whole nother level. Um, Cause they really don't teach you how to use your body playing soccer, uh, which I find very odd. Um, and so like you playing target forward, how do you post up? Right. Oh, basketball. Here's some post moves. This is yeah. how you That's shake really up. Um, and then, Oh, I'm like, Oh, I will do this in soccer. Right. And so um, I just think how we coach basketball, I think it's, it's, I like it. And I think it's at a higher level than soccer is. And I was having conversations with people and it could be because coaches are more involved to an extent in basketball. There's timeouts, you know, they, there's time for them to really analyze what's going on and make changes in real time or soccer. It's delayed. Um, mm. And so, but like, in an everyday level, like they approach positions um, in like a specific way. So like basketball, I had guard training one day a week in addition to team practice, like soccer okay. only plays get position specific practice. Hmm. And so um, I think if you have like forward practice, all the forwards playing soccer would be a lot better. Um, and they really, told you specifically in basketball, like, this is how you attack, you drive with the front foot, and, like, this is how you shake them, and, like, this is, like, they get into that soccer, I kind of just learn, I'm like, okay, well, um, I'm gonna do a little hesitation, like, I'm gonna, like, all my 1v1 stuff, they teach you how to do the move, they don't really teach you why you do the move, and how to make the move effective. Okay. Um, so, like, you grow up, you learn scissor, you learn how to, like, step over, you, like, you just learn the mechanics. But to be effective, because a lot of girls will go out and do all this stuff and still not beat the defenders. And I'm like, what's the point? And especially when I started coaching and doing private training, it mm-hmm. like really came into my front like view. Because I'd be like, okay, you don't need a new 50 move. Do one move and explode and go. Like, and in basketball, they tell you, you like, they'll stop practice and be like, you already had the girl beat. Why did you kept come back? Why'd you cut back? You already had her beat use your arm, push her off and go. And in soccer, you know, you can, people don't stop and like tell you, do it like this, this is good, Mm -hmm. in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think basketball really helps soccer. Um, Being a forward and attacking also defensively, 
and um there's just so many transferable skills like so many mentally huge because you know the culture the basketball culture versus soccer culture like that i think the biggest thing was the mental like resilience part um because if you ever been in a gym aau it's a whole, it's a whole different uh, thing it's yeah. a whole not, different. not even this gym like pickup games like any any Anything. of that i yeah. think i i think that's a really good point right like we don't particularly in women's soccer teach people how to use their their bodies i'm even thinking like when you screen when you set a pick in basketball when you do any of that right that's really transferable mm-hmm. um to the to the sport wow that's a okay yeah and like Probably. there's just like <laughs> small things if you think about um uh what else like rebounding Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like Autumn. you make contact first and you go for the ball. That's shielding, you know. Yep. yep. Um, like even recognizing spacing, basketball they really hone in. Like, okay, which is the run the play, run the play. If they cheat, back door. Mm-hmm. Soccer as a wide forward. Okay, I'm gonna check in. They cheat through ball. Um, so things just like a lot of things like that. Um, it's just more explicit in basketball. Um, mm. Then in soccer for weird reasons. Right. So, so you obviously played basketball, and what was your position? Point guard. Point. Okay, so that also makes sense, right? In terms of creation. Um, so you played, but I'm assuming you also watch. Are there players whose games you like take from and incorporate it into your soccer? Um, soccer, basketball, players. like basketball players, like their style of play. Are there yeah. things that they do that you incorporate? Well, I loved watching Steve Nash and Chris Paul. Those are like my okay. favorite players growing up. Okay. And I know um, Steve Nash is a huge soccer fan, so then, like. <laughs> and he played right. soccer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I really like their vision. Okay. Um, and, like, yeah, I just really liked watching them. Um, and my parents, like, they watched basketball. They didn't really watch soccer. I didn't watch soccer growing up. Okay. Um, because, you know, it's not really, like, in black homes. And so I would sit with my dad, and we'd be watching sports, and we'd be watching basketball. We'd be watching the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they made sure, like, if Serena was playing, they're, they're putting on tennis to watch Serena. Um, and then the Olympics would come on. But it really was, if there was a black woman, and they knew she was playing, we're watching that, or it was, like, basketball or football, American football. Okay. So like, what, like what, you, what was that? I would just say it sounds like every home in the South in the black community. Yeah, my dad did it all the time. Yeah. So like, once you like like when you got into soccer, like who were the players that you really really kind of gravitated towards? Um, I know like, like you started like as a defender, right? Well, way back, yeah, I was a defender. Wait, uh, you went from defender yeah. to you went back to front. I, yeah, so when I first started, I was right. a sweeper. I was a sweeper. Oh, okay. Sweet and um, I was sweeper, and then I went to stopper. Like, this is rec soccer. And then I was, like, holding mid, then attacking mid. And then when I left, like, my rec team and went on to, like, an actually good club in, like, seventh grade, I made this big transition. And then they played me at forward. And so from seventh grade on, I've been playing forward. Um, wow. But, Yeah. So, but I think, honestly, I think if I go to the highest level, I'll probably play outside back. I think I would have to play outside back. Uh, the, the trajectory. Right. <laughs> the, the usual. The use. Oh, man. But I'm uh, actually, I actually can like, defend now. Okay. You and, like, like, and I, because I grew up, I think if I was taller, I'd be center back. Like, I just like, okay. if I was, yeah, in a different life when I had some inches, because <laughs> you could just be mean. And oh, okay. I, I like being me. <laughs> and I ain't gonna lie to you. That's why I play center back and pick up because I know, like, I don't got the skills to be a forward, but I can throw this body around and be really mean to people. Defense is about want to, man. I mean, yeah, it's about talent too. Like, angle is how you position your body, but yeah. like, it's about want to. You, yeah, you gotta want it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, so, question here. Um, at what point did you know? Or did you feel that, hey, I could actually make this a career? I could, like, we're like, okay, like, yeah, I could do law school or I could, you know, see what's up, see what's up, play a career for a bit. 
I'm all in college. I knew like at Stanford, you have all the best people and like a lot of the girls go pro. So I knew I had the ability and I think it just came down to it at the end. I was like, I haven't done what I think I can do on the soccer field. So I can't hang it up now because I have more to do. Um, so that's why I wanted to be a pro. <laughs> I don't even think I really was like, Growing up saying, I want to play pro and all this stuff. That wasn't me. I actually wanted to be a doctor. <laughs> um, I mean, going to Stanford, that seemed like the career choice. True. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it kind of just, I just was like, I can't quit now. So, I can't now, 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 you did have a, a quick spell over here in, in WSL last year. I know. Which, Two years ago, with yeah. uh, with Omar Rain and uh, playing through the uh, Challenge Cup. Now, of course, uh, you're talking to you uh, offline. It, it sounds like um, you want to keep stay over in Europe at least for a little bit. Like, tell us about you know just that, that experience there. That, and of course, like what's been your, I guess your perspective as far as everything that happened last year with all the scandals that that, uh, that came out. Yeah. Um... So, I mean, there's sexism everywhere. So there's pl pros and cons to being in the U.S. and in Europe. Like, you're not going to escape it. Um, it's just, it just is different. It comes in different ways. So mm. I enjoyed the rain a lot. Um, but because the girls were all... Um, like we all got along and we had like a very cohesive group because that was during the summer of all the protests, George Floyd and all this stuff. And so it was unique that we came together because I know people on other teams and like our whole team, everybody kneeled and that's huge for that level of um, like unity. And like I was doing a book club and a lot of the girls would participate and I was having them read all these like. Is that, is that loose? Excuse me. The same one that Lou did, or Lou Barnes. Uh, there's a there's a bunch. Yeah, there's another book club. I'm not sure. I'm asking. Well, we it was it was um like informal. It was like a book and article. Like we wouldn't read uh, okay. books. It was just like um discussion on things that I brought together. Um, and I don't know if they did something after I left. I'm, I don't know. Okay. Um, but um, people really cared about what was going on, and then the organization was open to us saying this is what we need to do this is how we want to move forward um so it wasn't just lip service like a lot of the clubs you know it's very performative we have this statement of solidarity blah blah blah, blah. and then <laughs> they would you know, brothers come down to the front like watching their girlfriends play that was in where was that houston um yeah. with, with sarah gordon um like, come on. There, so there were so many things like that that you would see in the NWSL. Um, and so to your question, all the scandals coming after, because during when I was there, there wasn't that much. I don't think there was a, there were that many scandals because um, COVID was just so overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and, and, but there were some instances where coaches were tweeting racist things or retweeting stuff and then, then weren't held accountable, of course. Yet the team was like, we support our black players diversity, of course, right? right. Um, but with all the sexual, you know, and verbal abuse that was happening, um, uh, I wasn't shocked. Um, the power dynamics that are present in the NBSL um, just naturally produce or an, an environment that will produce things like that um, just because the coaches have so much control over you. And um, there's no accountability. And so um, I can, like, I don't doubt what these women have said at all. Um, and there's so much work that the NWSL needs to do. Um, is that is that played a part in you, in you uh, like prefer to play over in Europe right now, or like 
Um, I mean, I'll play Europe, it by ear. it's it's there's not you don't really hear about like abuse. Um, mm. that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Um, but I think I don't know. I don't know why you don't hear about it. I don't really figure that out. But there's a lot of sexism, and people don't value female athletes, women's soccer players, as much as they do in the States, actually. Mm. So I think people respect women's soccer players way more over here. Mm. Over there, it's still a man's sport. And I'm shocked. I'm like, isn't this the world's game? Don't you think mm. in Europe it would be more popular? And people will come out the yin-yang for the men's side, but the women's side, it's like, mm. not valued. And okay. so that's why I came to FCN is because mm-hmm. they have values that are about equality in gender and then they back it up with resources. So mm-hmm. this is the first Good. club where the men and women use the same weight room. Okay. And the men, they like, I can train and play games on the men's field. Okay. And I can have access to the men's doctors and like, we live in the same place, you know? So all of these things, which coming out of the States and college where they have to with title nine and it's normal. And then going to Europe where that's not the case at all. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah. What in the world? Um, and then the NWSL is different because there's no men's side that's attached. So it's dependent on the club. And, um, there's a level of professionalism at most places, but even then, like at the rain, we trained at a high school and we didn't really have a weight room and we played games at the rain, rain, the Rainier stadium. Uh, Ch- Chaney stadium. Yeah. Chaney stadium. And they're triple a baseball. So we shared time yep. with baseball and they had priority mm-hmm. and you play in the games and the fans are like way over there. And, and like, it, it's still not, college where you have everything mm-hmm. um so college is actually the most professional even though you're not being paid but it's the literally the most professional environment i have experienced thus far mm-hmm. and especially in like the sports performance and medical side because i've mm-hmm. been injured and that's really important and um unparalleled like the quality mm-hmm. of care i got <laughs> well, at Stanford and like the rehab and the PT and all of that was just phenomenal. And so I'm like so scared if I like turn ACL out here in Europe or something. Oh, oh no! So is the men's team is the men's team top flight in their division as well? Um, in Denmark, in Denmark, yeah, like the men's side of your of your team. Yeah, they're in the Superliga. Oh, they're in Superliga. Uh, okay. Yeah, but it's just <laughs> like different the medical science is different every country has different beliefs mm. and in the states it's just very different um for instance in a lot of european countries like they don't believe in ice or um hmm. uh, like when i played in switzerland they didn't believe in lifting like they would they didn't believe in lifting um because, like, do they not just, value strength? Like, I feel like I see that, though, in the game sometimes where it's all technique. But no, I know Americans, especially on the women's side, it's the, you know, it's the athleticism. And then, oh, yeah, you'll play soccer. I don't inherently agree with all of that, though there is some truth to it. But, like, do they, I, I notice that. Like, they don't seem to value, like, the, they don't. the athletic side of it, right? Yeah. It's a sport. <laughs> yeah. And so every country has their different, um, like, style. And a lot of European style is um, we're going to play tiki taka and the most skillful people are going to be the best. And, you know, they don't value, like you said, they don't value strength or speed or, you know, like Ronaldo's the first person to freaking lift. Like he's the first guy to be like, you know what, I'm going to be fast and strong. And and that's going to be a really um, advantageous part of my game. Or the other, like most soccer guys are like, I don't care about lifting and these tiny little guys, but they're super <laughs> skillful. Um, so, but I think you also get in the, in the U.S. and over, if it's especially in college, like you're freaking, cause we have the football guys running right. our strength program, right? Right. <laughs> lift and run and all this stuff and girls put all a lot of muscle and they might right. get a little slower or in my case, you just get injured more because. Right. 
I'm lifting a fuck ton of weight. Right. And <laughs> More than your frame needs. needs right? My knees are shot at the end of it, you know? And then, because you're pushing because our season is so short and you have all these games, boom, 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 that we're not adequately recovered. And so you just get more injuries. Like By the time postseason happened, people were injured. Yeah. Just because yeah. we're playing two games a week and going hard, running, putting our body under all this stress, and it's your body's just worn out by the end. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so That's helpful. Good. That's really helpful. Okay. <laughs> you guys saw No. Like... I'm just sitting back here listening to her and just yeah. a lot of stuff that I thought like, is actually making sense about like the part like about yeah. coaching bas well coaching soccer to basketball. Like you remember like I was a girls um soccer coach and like all of my girls were basketball players. They did use soccer as condition mm. to get ready for summer basketball. So mm. I, like I had to myself, I had found myself like trying to coach it to them as soccer and I wasn't working. So when I started coaching to them as basketball. Like it clicked. And what did so you like, change? How did you change? Um, so my girls, like I coached at an inner city black high school, <clears throat> and we were not like the only. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and we went up against schools in the county. You know, these wh- predominantly white schools. Um, uh, all their players are like soccer players. Like they are in the Richard Kickers Academy. You know, travel soccer and stuff like this. So like. I was like in their pro like, right, I'm gonna be really defensive. Like I was trying to teach them like how to play center back, defensive mid, all this stuff. And it wasn't clicking for them. Cause you can see like they were overthinking what was going on and they weren't being reactive. And I was trying to teach them like you have to react. Like, soccer's all about to me, not soccer pro soccer player, but it's all about, you know, being reactive. Like if you can beat somebody to their spot before the ball is there, nine times out of ten, mm-hmm. you're gonna win. But when I started coaching to them like it was basketball, it started putting the players in a position that closely correlated to what they played. They, like, we weren't blowing teams out, but we were a little bit more competitive than what we were. So, like, for instance, I put the point guard in, like, the attacking mid position. Because I'm like, I'm going to put you here because you can distribute. <laughs> you have the best vision. Yeah. You know, small forward or, like, the shooting guard, I will put them at forward because it's like, you're going to be the ball carrier. You're the one that's scoring the goals, whatnot. And then, like, the forwards and centers, I will put them in center back spots or fullbacks because, like, you have the best defensive skills and you know what to do. Hmm. Almost like that. So that's how I kind of relate it to them. Yeah. It's funny that you say that because, like, the my homie that I was talking about, you know, Quincy. Um, yeah. So, like, when he was, like, at Maggie Walker, uh, he was coaching JV boys, and it was the other way around where most of those boys were playing soccer, and and uh, they would you know, talk to them in a soccer uh, context for them to get it. And one thing I suggested to them was like, why don't you? Because like most of these guys were like five to the under, so they had no real guys. And I was like, why don't you use like a total football t- tactical mentality, where it's like you basically have a position positionless. Um, uh, five where it's like, okay, like whoever's on this side basically uh, D's up on, on one side and whoever's running point, it's like, hey, like you're, you're, everyone is already sitting the same size anyway, so you might as well be teaching them the same thing. And, yeah. and once, once it kind of the idea as far as like, okay, like I can basically handle whichever position that, that there is on the court, it, it makes it a whole lot easier, um, to, to navigate. So it's actually kind of interesting that that she well uh, put it like that because yeah, like it's for, for the boys. <clears throat> it's just, it was like yes, yeah, it's, it's exactly the other way around. Um, now what actually? Uh, now well, when you did two since last year, I think that was before you started doing any any other writing. Like what got you in the kick of like one to, to go into writing? It honestly just happened um, out of the blue. <clears throat> um, I got invited to speak on a panel that one of my old professors was doing on sports and activism. Okay. And um, after me, they had Jesse Washington from the undefeated talk about his book um, mm-hmm. that he wrote about the Georgetown basketball coach, who was the first black coach to win um, the NCAA title. Um, yeah, sure. 
John Thompson. Thompson. John Thompson yes. the third. Yes. 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 No, the first. Oh, no, second, actually. Yeah, yeah, second. yeah, he was second. He was second. second. And his book is like, second. it's on my list. It's like um, From a Shadow or something. Um, I should know it, uh, but I need to read it. Anyway, he was talking about his book. And so I stayed on to listen. And then afterward, we started connecting. And um, we we're just talking. And he was like, tell me your story. I started talking. He's like, you should write for The Undefeated. And um, he connected me with his editor. And so I pitched a couple stories to his editor. And that's how I got the ball rolling. And um, so I wrote my first piece on Crystal Dunn. And that went well. And so then I wrote the other piece on Brianna Scurry's legacy and A.D. French being the next black keeper after her. And, um, and then I had some time over the holiday. And so I pitched another piece on the New Year's Day traditions. So. It's funny. It's funny because like I, reading that, <clears throat> I um, like I was never like growing up. I couldn't stand Black Eyed Peas for the life of me, and like now it's like you know what? I yeah, it, 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 it actually works. Like like yeah, maybe my taste buds have changed, but yeah, like it was like oh like, and then of course once you realize it's the context and the and the history behind the uh, Black Eyed Peas and collard greens and everything, it's just like yeah, like there's actual meaning. You're just thinking like. Why am I eating these nasty ass black eyed peas? Like this, this <laughs> No, I, I feel the same. Like I like them now. I couldn't say anyone else at all. I like I always have liked them. Really? New Year's Day has always been my favorite meal. Like yeah. oh, I'm wow. looking forward to the North Carolina barbecue and we do chicken and dumplings and mm. mac and cheese and greens and black eyed mm. peas and <laughs> all that food. And I just knew like they'd be like, This is what our ancestors ate during slavery. But that's it, really. That's all I knew. Um, and then Black Eyed Peas bring good luck in like greens mm-hmm. and financial success. But outside of that, that was it. And so, <clears throat> like my piece, talking with my dad and my brother, things started coming together. And then I did a lot of research. And um, just the fact that the holiday grew out of a celebration of emancipation and freedom and being with your family. Because that was the day that black families got ripped up and were sold is huge. Yeah. And um, I'm like, ah, I, I see why we do this on this day. And it's lasted so long. And just the crazy thing how food, even if the history is lost, the food never gets yes. lost. Yeah. Uh, so see, was it high on the high on the hog? Is what it is that the one on Netflix? The, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. yeah, yeah. That's about, I, yeah. I, I, I think I finished that during. Uh, They're doing season two. I think. I mean, yeah, the yeah. yeah. yeah, is really good. Food, really good. Is the, yeah. food is the connector through the generations, through different families, through all of it. There's always a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, one one last question before we kind of wrap up this this part. Um, it's the uh, it's the uh, Knuckleheads question. Who was the first player when you could be turned protist to bust your ass? And just make you feel like, oh, like. Look at her face. She's like, who was like, 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 nobody bust my ass. Like, <laughs> nobody. How dare you? So <laughs> I'll correct Brinko's question. When you what? became a pro, Who's ass did you who was the first player you embarrassed? <laughs> who was the first player you embarrassed? Um. I mean, I'm about to get us canceled and cut off the I know, right? (laughs) My bad, my bad. Switzerland, so it didn't like. Like, light work. Like, please. (laughs) Um, But the rain was funny. So it's it's because Stanford was such a high level that, like, coming there was the first pro environment. environment. And so, like, every, like, We'd have the best girl every year. We'd have the number one recruit. You'd have girls who were in the 20s or 23s, Herman Trophy winners, like whatever. Hmm. So um, I come there and um, I'm like, wow, like, wow, the level is super high. But I can hold my own. Like, I can hold my own. And so I had that confidence. And so I was like the first sub off the bench, like my whole freshman year. Um hmm. And so there were things I needed to work on, but there were things that I could do that no one else could do. So I always had that kind of like confidence because um, I would smoke like, I'm like, I don't care who you are. Like I'm smoking you. And um, so just being in that environment every day, like Andy Sullivan, she's on the national team. Yeah. Alana Cook, she's been called in. T, Tierna Davidson. 
um, played with her, Jane, I played with her, Kat Macario, played with her, like, all these girls who are called in, I play with them every day. Mm-hmm. And what are those, so, what were those practices like? <laughs> it, it's fun because I, like, the challenge is what attracts me to soccer, like, if I'm not challenged, I'm out, like, Celtic, right? So when we're doing, like, <clears throat> mind changes or 1v1s or 2v2s, whatever, I'm like, I'm about to smoke Alana. I'm about to smoke Andy. And right, and they're like, no, like, no. T's like, no. And so it was just this thing where I'm going to get you one day. You might get me one day. And I, we're not backing down. And so um, I go to the rain because I came, I was like, hey, I'm here. Like, can I, like, I'm trying out pretty much. I, like, I didn't go to open trial, but I was trying out. I had no, um, I don't know, what do they call it? Like, they didn't have my rights. They didn't mm-hmm. invite me in. Like, they didn't know. I was not on anybody's radar. I was, be like, your <laughs> I was just like, I'm down the street. I'm coming. Like, whatever. And so we get there, and there's, like, a slow center back. And I'm like, I'm dicing you up. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. It and, um. <laughs> yeah, they okay. back okay, it happened so they pushed everything back and it was unknown like we had there was so much uncertainty like if we start again you could get called back you could not this is after like a week and a half of preseason mm-hmm. um, and so they're like here's a fitness packet and then there's no one's training like usually I would train with the boys like the bo- like no clubs are training um, like the high school team I would train with no one's there so I'm just by myself by myself running doing technical stuff for like months and then in may or june they're like hey we're doing training camp in montana next week like are you ready you want to come i'm like i'm ready so then i just go and we're in montana for a month and so they're like um on this date we gotta have make the final cuts and then half the roster by so pretty much i had a month to like prove myself Mm -hmm. and we would train and like all the trialists like they didn't really care about us and like whatever like they would have forwards like they're like forwards come here defenders come here and the forwards like if you're on trial like me you just defending the other forwards like it wasn't Mm. we were just like you know cones they were just whatever help they needed we do it so it's hard to really show right but we would have scrimmages we'd have like a scrimmage a week and we knew that with the numbers that they would have to use the trial list. And so I knew I was going to get some time. So I was like, okay, this is my time to like make my mark. And so I just, when we'd have 11 v 11, I do my thing. Mm -hmm. And so there are moments every game. Like I, I think in our second scrimmage, I got Lou, I diced Lou Barnes (laughs) up and she um, fouled me in the box. I got a PK and they were like, Ooh, and then the next scrimmage, like, I score. And the next one, I score and get an assist, and I score. And so they had to sign me. Like, they had to sign me at that point because I was being consistent and I was showing, like, what I could do. And so I think I just had a belief in myself because um, I was like, I've been in pro, I've been in tough environments. I've been in, like, Stanford was, like, our team could compete. Our team could compete against the NFL team. Like, our practices were even more intense, I think, in some respects. And so I had to learn how to fight and be resilient and have like the right mentality. And um, so I was prepared. I was really prepared at the rain to like, because there were times like one, one training before, this is like before the final scrimmage, before they had to make the roster cuts. And the trialists, all of us are standing on the sideline and we like warmed up and then they just had everyone else train and they're like, oh, like we might sub you in, like be ready. They never sub us in. So we just stood on the sideline for the entire practice. Mm. And um, some of the girls were like sad or anxious, like this is unfair or whatever and like getting down. And I'm just like, honestly, more rest for tomorrow. <laughs> and I came out there and I wasn't tired. Like, I, I was balled out. I scored a goal and that sealed the deal. Like you can't let those things get to you. And so having like a mindset, um, is the difference between being able to play and perform or, you know, getting tired. So I got one question for you before we wrap up. 
So I want you to think about this one. What what gave you the better feeling? Beating Cal as a Stanford player or beating Rangers as a Celtic player? Oh, um, well, the thing is, our Cal rivalry was strong, but we would always beat them. So it wasn't like... Right, like it's not... It wasn't yeah. like that. Like, we would always beat them. So I would say, like, our rivalry against UCLA was yeah. bigger because it would be, like, back and forth more. Yeah. And I was like, mm-mm, you know? Um, so I would definitely say the Rangers was bigger than Cal Stanford. Um, so I want to know anything about Stanford and UCLA. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's, I mean they're the two teams that run the, the yeah. Pac-12. I say that as somebody who's in Pac-12. So, like, yeah, they're... Yeah. Yeah. Um and the Santa Clara rivalry was big too. Um but for a while we would run then, but recently they, just, they, they haven't been yeah, they got good again like recently. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't been good for but a while, they but. they knocked us out of the tournament my junior year when I wasn't when I was hurt. I was redshirting. And my best friend scored the game winner. Oh wow. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't know. So, it's so needless to say that the, the group tech, the group chat was like, "Oh, <laughs> mad shit talk." There, yeah, and we, there, there was, yeah, there was beef. We, there was a lot of teams that we had like a little bit of beef with, but it's because we knew each other. So, like the Rangers, <clears throat> thing, I don't know the girls on Rangers, so mm. it's like this historical thing yeah. that like everyone mm. else is like, you know, they like hype it up. I'm like, okay, but in the states, if you play against all these girls. Growing up, like regional team, state team, national team, so you know them. So there's personal like beef, <laughs> and that makes it because like, oh, you know, this girl stole her man. So we got it. <laughs> oh, y'all! Oh, okay. we got days of our life, bro. <laughs> like, like, so it goes. Oh, so we're like, yeah, like we can't let them beat us. Oh, that wow. stole her man and it scored the goal. Good luck. <laughs> oh God! Oh man! Um. What was the one? <laughs> that right there is actually Listen. funny. Um, you need to see these text messages. Oh, no, no, or, do, or do you? Or do you? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like this is uh, actually been, been really fun. Uh, like I, I know uh, by the time you get this, like you're pro- by the time this comes out, you're right. You'll already be out, be back in Denmark. You know, like and of course, you know, just all the all the success in the world. You know, you know, going. Um, going back over there for the rest of the season, and you know, next, you know, when you when you get back stateside, you know, come back to South, you know, because like, I like I feel like I have to come through and educate on this on this barbecue tip, because like yeah, like they're, they're, especially like like you know Wilson, Rocky Mount, Kenston, uh, uh, they try like they, trust me, there's enough barbecue spots to where I can I can get you straight, like that's that's just I just time. don't believe in a world where like I rank. Barbecue ahead of other barbecue, like it's that's like when people argue about dollar dollar price, like it's all good. Like I'm, I'm fine. I'm gonna try. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get back to you on that one because I. Okay, we'll talk. We'll that. talk. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, like of course it's a new year with uh, FTC UTD. Uh, of course, like everybody that that ordered all the Formiga uh, hoodies over the holidays, mm. uh, thank you guys for supporting the podcast and everything. Uh, of course we got we got new shit on on, on the horizon uh, this month. We are celebrating the African Cup of Nations. Uh we've uh got new hoodies at FTC UTD that much com. We got new uh Drogba Legends of the Culture hoodies with uh, Ivory Coast. And because of there's there was so much demand with the Formiga hoodies, we actually did uh went back and uh we pulled back both Formiga and Marta hoodies uh, from the 2007 uh, World Cup where Martin just basically just took over the world. And um, you can uh, get those now at ftcutd.myshipify.com. Um, there was uh, one other one that I did. I, I, wait, I'm over here slacking. Like, I, I, I can't even do that because like, there's one more on there that I, I know that we just put out as well. Also coming out next week, um, of course, last last year the big thing was the racist encounter hoodie um, T-shirts. We've actually are about to drop the the hoodie version of the uh, of the racist encounter. Of course, uh, we we went we made it like a good, like a good week uh, so far this year without without an incident. I know like 
uh, Juventus reported an incident with, uh, with McKinney and what's keep on. And I'm like, you know, can we just, you know, it's always going to happen. I'm just like, come on, y'all, please. But, uh, but yes, keep supporting podcasts, keep supporting, uh, our, our fam with, uh, two cents at two cents sports dot shop. And, you know, of course, make sure that you check it out. All the soccer she wrote, um, blogs that come out. Like, what, when do you normally write? Uh, Mariah. Um, so they drop every other Tuesday <clears throat> and I'm on a break because we're on a break from soccer. So right. we're going to start back up, uh, this month, later this month. So be on the lookout and, um, have some good content for you guys. You could all, all write about like COVID. No, COVID sucks. Just say COVID sucks. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that, that'll be the blog. Like, yeah, I went home. I caught COVID for Christmas. The end. There you go. But, um, but yeah, let's uh, hop up here in uh, two up and two down. Ah, uh, let's see here. I'm not going first. I actually want to put the oh, seals first. Well, my camera's up. All right. Oh, all right. There we go. Um, <laughs> do I have two up and two down? Um, okay. Up. Uh, I guess we're probably going to talk about it some more. Afcon started. Uh, today. So yes, that was fun. We had a yellow car like at forty seconds in, roughly. It should have been a red. Oh my god, <laughs> it's flagrant. Uh, but that's just no blood, no foul. No blood, no foul. I mean, big Concacaf energy on that one. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I just it's one of my favorite like international tournaments. I don't think there's anything quite like it. Uh, obviously the kids are also amazing. The skill level, style, style of play, like the audacity to just try stuff. Um, and also the rules are suggestive. Like it's, it's however you feel in that moment. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's really cool. Um, man, I don't know. It's just a lot. Like I said, it's, it snowed a lot out here. Um, to the point where you can't get from one side of the state to the other right now. I don't know if the pass is open yet. Probably not. Um, I'm I'm really over it. I'm over being cold. I'm over snow. <laughs> um, classes start. We push classes back because people can't get back to campus. Um, so yeah, just trying to trying to do that. Trying to, uh, I guess up is 2022 is looking like a a good year for the for the show. Um, for for Shea Butter. So it's really grateful for some of the opportunities coming. Um, I'm not gonna have to talk about yesterday. What happened yesterday? Uh, the, 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 that tweet and the response. <laughs> I mean, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not in the afterlife anymore. Uh, that was really innocuous. Like of all the things, like I forgot I did it. And then Scott was like, yo, I was driving. I had to drive to and from Spokane yesterday. So, um, yeah, that, that was wild. Uh, I was now, for those of you like, that, don't, that don't know, childhood dream. Um, that is right uh, there. Sills made a made a tweet over the weekend. Basically talking about like how about how um so the, uh, the WSL team should be hollered at uh, at basketball players and Angel City well, saw it. Yeah, it was tam- it was tampering. So like it, the WNBA kind of did tampering, right? Is my argument? Everybody does it. So why does everybody get in trouble for it? But my running joke was like they're gonna find a way to find. Angel City for it, because it's tampering, right? They're the only people who seem to get fined for tampering in the sport, women's sports, period. So, uh, yeah, apparently they found it. Uh, it retweeted and asked Candace Parker to play soccer. She played when she was younger. She's not bad either. And I know she's an owner. So, or an investor, sorry. Uh, yeah. And so something with my name on it was replied to by Candace Parker. So that is enough for me to feel accomplished in life right now. So, yeah, no, that's definitely an, uh, uh, if you don't know, yeah, I'm a huge Lady Ball fan uh, from way, way back. And so, yeah, Ken Spark is one of my favorite players ever. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, and there was just a lot of good football on today. Um, Mariah, you're an Arsenal fan? You want to talk about it? Okay. I was like, I'm not going to Hey, the, cute, the kids were cute, though. They were cute. <laughs> I they were just, cute. I wasn't, I wasn't going. It's, a, it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause, you know. Look, 
I mean, at least y'all doing better than day, Days of Our Lives at SC. You ain't gonna worry about it. Is that what you calling your team now? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. No. Until they prove to me that they're a team, I'm referring to them as every soap opera. So it'll change next week. When, when, when did we switch places with Chelsea? That's all I want to know. Like, just all the all well, the you know, all, all American FC decided oh, they God. wanted to not do anything right. So it is what it is. I mean, I mean, as a Chelsea fan, it, it did not hurt my feelings today. That's all I'm gonna say. Right, but, right, uh, right now, United is exhausting. Right now, so I'll, I'll, so I can really say they're just exhausting. Y'all got a game tomorrow, don't you? They got a game tomorrow. I okay, got work. <laughs> yeah, so about that, yeah. Uh, I see. Um, and then oh, we got it straightened out. But my, I get to see my parents next month, and hopefully, if um Omarion stops iceboxing where my heart used to be out here, um. <laughs> Uh, and I haven't seen my parents in over two years, so it would be really nice to see them. Yeah. Like I said, we need to get we to get you out of the snow, and hopefully, you know, I said, I said that that is on the vision board this this year. This is going to be your last winter up up here. To get snow. I, I definitely screamed that at some point when I was outside. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this anymore. I was I was done. Like oh, one God. day it was like below zero. I was like, nope, nope. I'm it's funny because like a couple of years ago we had we had we had a little cold rush here in Atlanta. I'm like like I, I don't I don't want anything of below ten. You could have that. You just mm-mm. like oh, I, I I I I pray for Mariah because I'm like yo like Denmark right yeah, now does Denmark. not does not sound like it's uh balmy right now. How cold is how cold is Denmark though? It was it was colder here. I was trying to okay. escape it and because we had a snowstorm in Seattle. Yeah. So, Seattle doesn't do snow as well as like in no. the northwest. No, <laughs> no, they don't. No. We we don't know what to do when it snows out here. It's like the south. Like they're just like, oh, bread and milk. Okay, like oh yeah, oh Richmond shut down over half an inch. You know the bread. The bread is all gone, right? Yeah, yeah. that's all y'all got, bro. Don't you got like more than that, that. Is ri- bro? I I have a teacher. Hold on, how, do, how much did y'all get this week? Because like the whole, two inches the whole... all together. Oh, that's a whole what? week. So shut, you shut down for a whole week. Oh, two yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, we said that for a whole week. Oh, I was supposed to go back to teach this week. Do you know they had this out of school? We went back one day. I had no kids. I was in there watching soccer. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. But, see, like, but, 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 that, but that's, that, that, I have a question on that because especially with everything that happened last year and the year before, like, are snow days really snow days anymore? Could y'all just basically say, just say like, hey, 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 No, hey, there's hey. still snow days here. Like, the yeah, kids had a snow, snow day this week, and they didn't go. They didn't the only thing is, like, Virginia has it. If we have four consecutive, that fifth day will be a virtual Online. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, you But ain't nothing getting done because everything will be asynchronous. I ain't teaching. I'm going to tell the kids, y'all be blessed. I'll see y'all one day. I mean, props to you for still being a teacher, because, listen, it's, they're wild. The only here. reason why I'm still a teacher is because my job is very chill and relaxed. Uh, like, great. I get to design what I do. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, that's, that's good because I will say being in education right now is rough. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's rough. So, like plus with Yonki coming in, see, I'm about to get on the time. I'll see you. Yeah, you. you, in, you, you about to end up being on, 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 on that note, let's, uh, let's go ahead. Sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah, I don't have. I'm I'm pretty tapped out. So because like stuff about, it's on your mind, man. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> My one big down is Yonki coming in because it's about to. Yeah. I have a whole, I have a very big issue with people that are not educators telling educators what to do. Like we're incompetent, mm-hmm. so it's like Duncan is now employing a woman into the secretary, se- secretary of education, who is a businesswoman who knows nothing about education, and is about to destroy the whole public school system. And then they're gonna be wondering why, like rich public schools is back struggling. Well, it's because all the money there's no way we go to public schools is now being diverted to these. Half public, half private schools, aka Chesterfield uh, County schools. As, as somebody who lived in Chesterfield County, yeah, I believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, believe. Um, so that's really my one big down. Just like if you know an educator, or and this is my thing, I know education is a very tough field. I'm not denying that. Do we get paid when we should get paid? Absolutely not, because without us, it would be no other job around this world. But I would encourage people to still go into education, but. Do it for the reason why you want to do it. Do it because you love what you do. Like, isn't that like I tell people all the time that get an education, like you're never going to see a million dollar check signed. But like, if you find a find a balance in it, 
of like knowing that you're helping the next generation get to where they want to, and then also like you're taking care of yourself and living within your means, whatever that is, like is a good profession to be into. And you can branch off from there and do whatever you want. Um, I don't want to scare people from being educated because we need good quality teachers that care, especially for our black babies. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my one kind of quasi negative slash positive. Um, other positive is Tennessee got the one seed. Now, what we gonna do with it? I don't know. I ain't worried about that yet. I just celebrated the one seed. Mm-hmm. We're probably gonna flame out. <laughs> yeah, you week. can't you can't lose next week though. So that's what's important, right? Look at God. We probably <laughs> gonna lose on my birthday. So oh no, I'm sorry. Myself. Sorry. yeah, probably gonna happen. Um, when it, that is what it is. My other positive is that Can I Kick It is coming back. Um, we're dropping episodes, two more episodes to round out this season, and then we're preparing a big AFCON-centric podcast that's going to be coming out hopefully near the end of the tournament or a little bit after. But it's pretty much the history of AFCON, some of the big games that happened. So it's probably we're trying to make it like a three-part podcast. But that's all positive. Are we bringing off the sleeveless, the sleeveless kits? Because I feel like that's legendary conversation. Oh yeah, we going full iron. Oh yeah, all yeah, right. Full iron. <laughs> we going into corruption, everything. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> all right, Mariah, you, you uh, give this a shot. Okay. She seemed nervous. Like she ain't scored goals before. She don't what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love yo. I love the ego that comes out in Mariah. Like it just, it's like yo, like. Like yo, know, the that flex, face you like, made when, like, you, when like, you were like, "Who busted your ass?" Like, like, that's like nobody busts my ass. Like nobody <laughs> does. That. Like, <laughs> how dare you ask me that? <laughs> this is this, this is the basketball of me coming out. Yeah, this you like yo, yo. I gotta ask. I gotta ask this one question. I'm sorry, but are you more competitive in Uno or Spades? I'm competitive in both, but spades, you ain't. I'm handling you in spades. I'm handling yes. you in spades. So spades do you, do, you, do you get you up and throw it down, or do you, <laughs> like, push your move? Like, you break the wrist. Yeah, oh, I, ah, you gotta stand up. <laughs> See, you, you know when it's really good when you do, like, a little sly, like, just a little nonchalant. Oh. You gotta oh, hit him with a little nonchalant. You do the greasy like that, you just like, <laughs> like, like, work. But yeah, I take it too. I take everything too seriously. Like it's just always the best. Tables and she played those things. <laughs> <laughs> and see, we get, we break out the bones too. Oh, bones! Yeah, bones are cool. You know, a good oh, game man. of bones is when you flip a table because you lost. Oh yeah, somebody. That's a good game of bones. <laughs> yeah, that's a good game of bones. But <laughs> that's why you gotta get like the the light like. Table, table, straight. <laughs> just ah, it's too heavy. You can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So what I would say my gown. It was getting COVID on New Year's. Oh, like I got COVID on New Year's. I was l- pulled up to my grandma, my aunt's, and then because my friend on the way over was like, "I feel bad. I'm taking a test. You should take a test." And so took my test when I got there and was positive and had to turn around. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, but it made me a plate though, so I still got the food. Okay, you got your food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So could, that could was... you taste it? Could you taste? Yes, it? yes. Good. I didn't lose my taste or smell, good. so we good. Cool. We good. Cool. Um. So that was a down leaving tomorrow. I'm sad because we were snowed in for a week, and then I had COVID for a week, so I really didn't like do much. So. Um, but thumbs up. Let's see what's going on. I saw Midge has like a little thing. She's on like FIFA. Um, mm-hmm. her limited edition Midge game. Like that's yeah. legit. I love yeah. seeing black women out there. So that's two thumbs up. That's dope. Dope. Well, yeah. That's all I got. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, it is just a prevailing down, I think, for everybody, um, especially here with the Two Cents family. It's just been COVID. I mean, like I said, we, Rashad caught it, I caught it, Chris caught it, Ty caught it, Mariah caught it. I'm like, yo, like, th- 
we, we normally do like a some type of COVID PSA. This actually goes out to everybody who actually is vaxxed. Don't get too reckless out here and think that you can't get it because you can. And hopefully, if you're lucky, you get you get very few um, symptoms like that. Me personally, it never got got back to the point where I had to go to the hospital. Like, yeah, just all the sore throats, coughing, body aches, all that stuff. The, the crazy thing about it was that I didn't actually uh, deal with. Uh, I actually, by the time I started feeling better, was when I actually realized I could not taste or smell anything. And that was kind of uh, just really weird because, like, yeah, like you really just couldn't smell literally shit. <laughs> and, and, um, like, but shout out to, um, to, uh, Mayor Kane, like, cause, like, he, um, was telling me, yeah, just get some aromatherapy oils. That's so something that's those a few times. And, like, eventually it'll come back. My, like, for the most part, my taste has come back. It's just more so, like, my smell. It's like, mm, I say maybe, like, 70% back, but like we're getting there. But, uh, but yeah, don't like keep take the mask up wherever you're at, especially if you're in a large crowd. And you know, just uh, uh be, be smart out here with, with, with like where you go because you all know how these people out here and you all know what, what they out here they out here living in sin, live it, live it, ain't living clean. Like, just be, 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 be careful out here. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, but yeah, of course. Um, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, our homeboy Maestro. Of course, for those of y'all who've been keeping up with the podcast since day one, uh, Maestro was um uh, where we would actually have like our first initial episodes. He actually just opened up a new nightclub here in Atlanta uh, called Unks Lounge, and um, hopefully I'll be able to get a chance to check it out probably this probably next weekend. But um, yeah, shout out to Maestro for that. Um, my downs, uh, just to kind of like recap some of, the, some of the things that happened over the holidays, um, we lost John Madden, uh, just huge. For those of y'all who followed American football, he's pretty much been like, I think the, one of the biggest drivers of that culture for probably the last 40 years between him you know, calling games for all the four major networks. And then of course the Madden football game, like if, if you grew up and didn't play Madden, Especially in the black household, you probably like your parents probably didn't like video games because I I like it just it's it's been a stable for such a long time, but um you know I, I think that he's probably one of the most influential people in probably most of our sports lifetimes because yeah like I said the past forty years it's been his stamp on the American football game, and then of course um, yesterday I uh, know Friday. We lost Sidney Poitier, and actor, activist, ambassador, just straight up icon. And you know, it's it's funny because like his era of film, I think I don't want to say have been forgotten, but just like you need to understand, like that dude was a monster back in his day. Like I, I think that he with Denzel before Denzel just. Out there, just, just like the first black actor to win, first black actor to win a best uh, actor Oscar. Uh, he was uh, knighted in, um, by Queen Elizabeth. Like, there's 94 years, and, and just to, to do all the things that he did, like you, you can't, you can't say it was too soon. It was just like, hey, he has lived a long life, and it's been, you know, this this journey, this journey forward is well earned. And all I can do is just give nothing but salutes to this man. Cause like, yo, like he's like, he's a pillar of this, of this culture. And, you know, all we can do is just continue to, you know, hold up the standards that, they, that he left on the culture and hopefully grow, grow from that. But, um, you know, just a quick salute to Sir City Poitier. That's really all I got for. This episode again, Mariah. Thank you so much for coming. Like I said, thank you for you know just doing what you do. And I said, well, it's Denmark or over here stateside. Like yo, like like I said, like I've been watching. Like I said, I'm 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 a huge fan, and uh, you know, nothing but you know strength and success the rest of the season uh, with FCN. Uh, where can the people find you on the socials? Well, thank you. First of all, thank you so much. And um, Murder She Wrote on Instagram. 
that's the biggest one. Twitter, I'm not really, I'm not really on Twitter like that. But um, be, anyway. I know, because I, I, I tried to find it because I was like, yo, like, yeah. like, because I like, trust me, there, there's still a shape to kick back. Like, just like, yo, they're still going as we speak. Like, it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, but, uh, but yes, like, it's, uh, it's, yo, know, like, like, you're, you're dope as hell. Like I said, I've, I've been enjoying the blogs and, um, it's, it's, it's been, um, really cool getting this time to, to chop it up with you and, uh, and all that. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This has been so fun. So, so let me get in there. Can I kick it, uh, you know, like, like what we should, like, ready to pull on the calendar? Cause I know, like, I, I heard that you're trying to like change the days on the, on like when when the episodes come out. Oh, uh, I mean, it'd probably be Thursday or Friday, probably Friday. I ain't doing that though. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so if if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow Can I Kick It FC on Twitter. I am going to push Yogi like crazy to get one on Instagram. But hey, at least Twitter, at least Twitter. But, Instagram's uh, coming. This we just gotta wait for our month to start. Okay. <laughs> It's, 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 oh, and there, and there is, like, we have big news coming up in a couple of weeks. I'm almost as big as having a ride on the show, but we got some big news coming up for Black History Month. So stay on the lookout for that, because, yeah, Black History Month for FTC is going to be pretty damn big. Um, it should be big. It's our month. Yeah. Well, every month is our month. Because That's what I was going to say. Like, there you go. Black, but you know? that is <laughs> our month. <laughs> and, um, Power to the people. And on uh, uh, Shape It Alert, what, what, what we got to uh, coming this month? Um, so this month we're going to start uh, some new pod episodes. So getting back in the swing of things after the break, even though we didn't really take a break. Um, if you want to check out, we've uploaded the three kickback episodes that we did um, over the break with Jasmine Spencer, uh, Sydney Cummings, and uh, Jorian Bakum. So um please take a listen to those yeah those and are goals. I know yes they were all great it was a blast to be able to do that with them um and hang out with agent maggie as well um so yeah just uh yeah check those out hopefully we'll have a new episode dropping this week um like i said still working out some of the details but we've got some hopefully good interviews uh coming you know it's trying to trying to get the word out trying to support black women in soccer and uh, hopefully some things coming on the horizon. I think 2022 is a big year for, for Shea Butter. And as always, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at SBFC underscore podcast. Um, yeah, we're active on both. And, uh, what, one last up, uh, I did see this, uh, over the weekend, uh, uh sitting this, uh, Nacello. Uh, I guess she's not playing, uh, this year. Yeah, she's not playing in the NWSL this year. So or she might end up yeah. somewhere else, but that ain't my business. <laughs> but uh, as always, you can catch us at FTC. UTD? Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, FTC UTD Pod on on TikTok. Uh, I think I I think I put a new video there. I'm not sure. But, but yes, you know, we're, we're always. We gotta do TikTok now? I was like, shoot. I, I, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, why you live in the sin. I'm, I'm not even. That's why I'm you not, live in the sin. <laughs> you want to take it to I'm not even gonna hold y'all to that one. But yes, you, you can find us on Snapchat too. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh yes, catch us on there. Like I said, you know, the, the winners starting to end with, with the league. So we'll have more to talk about uh, next week. Um, you know, it's like. In the next few weeks, gonna be some hot shit coming. So definitely stay tuned is, is with super us. Super draft coming? Oh yeah, the super draft is um is on Tuesday. Yes, and, uh, and of course I don't follow college soccer like that, at least for the men. So good luck on that. There will be no kickback for that. So yeah, for for Grego, for Sills, Yogi, Mariah, Coach, Mayor, CK, for Moby, for L, for Ty, for Sky, for Kai. All these bars for loose change for whole two sets team. Happy 2022, y'all. We added coaches real to coach everywhere. We will see y'all soon and we out. FTC UTD.